the question, one of the questions that caught my eye was, uh, should the dollar amount be determined only if lots, uh, should the dollar amount determine only the lot size if the plan has an acceptable risk reward? You know, part of risk, absolutely. You know, I talked about risk in terms of pairs, in terms of time and time frame, but absolutely, lot size is a big factor, of, of course. You know, you have to, you have to do the math uh, if you're going with multiple lots. And keeping in mind that you may have a position that you can afford the dollar amount loss on with just one lot, while others might be able to take two or three lots. I don't know what that number is. But as the final step, certainly um, the lot size is, of course, a, a major consideration. I, I don't mean to leave that off. But it's one of those that uh, I don't ever want to get into a discussion of calculations for lot sizes. I know a lot of people love these position calculators. I don't believe they really have any place in trading, to be honest with you, because that's as if to say every trade somehow was of equal setup value that were willing to take trades around economic releases the same way we would take them around non-economic releases. Um, I just don't believe that there's that lot size can be something that's uh, formulaic. That's just my opinion. Um, it's definitely not something that I feel is, is formulaic. So that means lot size to me is more a matter of, I think, experience and comfort. You know, if, if I'm trading the euro, U.S. dollar typically, and I wander into the pound yen or the euro yen or another rate cross rate or another pair that I don't trade as often. Should I go in with the same lot size just because I'm great with the euro US dollar? Of course not. I think lot size has a lot to do with some of those intangibles, some of those things that aren't necessarily plugging your account size into a formula with the risk reward and the uh, pip value. You know, I think there's some things that are are that have to be earned. I think multiple lots are definitely something that has to be earned in terms of your confidence. Okay, so uh, you won't hear me talk about formulas for position size, and, and lots are absolutely part of the conversation for risk, but I think it's really more a matter of confidence, confidence in the, in the setups, confidence in the time you're trading, confidence in the pair that you're trading, um, a number of things like that. And it's part of the dollar calculation, of course. That's why I kind of, I don't dismiss it. It just kind of lumps into that dollar calculation. Once you have your risk-reward ratio set, at that point, you can go ahead and say, I can afford one lot, two lot, five lot, whatever it is. Okay, so thank you for that question. That was a great question. I'm just going to scroll down the list here and tackle a couple more questions, and we'll get into... Uh, multiple time frame confirmation, pivots, Fibonacci, and then day trading. All right. <clears throat> uh, by the way, anybody who is looking to access power stats, as I mentioned repeatedly, it's something that should be added or may be added in the near future. My reason for bringing it up is I think it's absolutely relevant to look at in a general sense. You have the rhythm of the market now. It is not part, you will not be able to access it at the website that, that I was just at, even if you are an IBFX client right now. It's in the process of possibly being added. Okay? Right now it's a separate, and I, and I wouldn't go subscribe right now. I mean, I'm just showing you some information. I don't think it's necessary, necessary for you to do that at this moment. Like I said, we should be seeing that at the site, the IBFX.com site soon. If not, however, there are, um, there's a free version of it available at the Autotrader's website, which you're more than welcome to, to check out. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about multiple time frame filters, because there was a question early on. <clears throat> I even made a note from Harvey and Steve pertaining to this. And I think it's a really good question, because it's something that we're taught early on, but I think that it's often done in a way that, in my opinion, uh, doesn't necessarily make sense. 
when you consider that different time frames are a reflection of different psychology, and, and really the Pandora's box it opens. So let's talk about what I think uh, multiple time frame confirmation or multiple time frame analysis is. Okay, so what is it? Let's define it first so we're on the same page. When you're using multiple time frame confirmation, what you're basically doing, and, and there might be nuances in the de definition, but this is the most generally accepted definition, is if I'm looking at, for example, the 30-minute chart of the Euro-Yen, this is what we're looking at right now, 30-minute chart, Euro-Yen, that before I take the trade in any direction, I'm going to confirm it with a larger time frame. So 30 might be checked with the 1-hour or with the 4-hour. And if the direction on the 1-hour and 4-hour are in a downtrend or weakness, the direction that I decide to trade the 30-minute chart in will also be influenced by that larger time frame's direction. So that means that since there's weakness on the 1-hour, 4-hour, I would be looking to trade a breakdown out of this sideways market cycle on the 30-minute chart. That, in a nutshell, is the basic elements of multiple time frame confirmation. You're using the trend or the direction of a larger time frame to determine which way you're likely to trade the shorter time frame. And, you know, there is psychological relevance to that, okay? I'm not going to say there's not, but I think a lot of you are, know what, what's coming next, which is I don't use it. I don't subscribe to this philosophy. I'm not going to confirm the psychology of a time frame whose market cycle I can identify, whose trend I can confirm, okay, with another time frame. And here's why. Because... Well, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. Hear me out. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Okay? My problem is it opens Pandora's box to other time frames. And here's what, this is exactly what happens. I could set my watch by it. What happens is the trade starts going against you. Imagine, you know, inevitably a trade will. Trade starts going against you. And essentially what happens is you're already used to jumping time frames looking for confirmation, and now all of a sudden you're going to jump to larger time frames looking for reasons to stay in the trade. Trust me, it will happen. It, there's, just, there's no exception to this. For people who open up multiple time frames, what it does is it's justification for holding on to a trade. Now, do experienced traders who are very good with multiple time frame confirmation discipline themselves out of this? I, I believe that they do, because I have very good friends that are multiple time frame traders, but they're very good at sticking with the time frame that they entered on and not jumping to the larger time frame that they were confirming the trend on. That takes a lot of discipline, my friends, a lot. And I'm not going to assume a new trader is going to have that. Heck, I'm not going to assume an experienced trader has that. Okay? So because we can, by using the wave, identify the market cycle, and if I were, by the way, going to take a, a breakout or breakdown trade on this chart with a sideways market cycle and perhaps uh, use some sort of um, chart pattern or something on here. You know, let's say I was going to do something like that. Uh, let's say I go, to the, I go to a chart with the grab on it. And we'll go to the Euro Yen. Sideways, right? I can see it's neutral. I can see the blue candles plotting. I know that I'm in a sideways market cycle. I know that prices could trade in either direction. They could break out or they could break down. Now, I know that the longer term time frames, the one hour is also in consolidation, but the four hour is in a downtrend and the daily chart is in a downtrend. So multiple time frame traders would say, I'll trade this thing if it breaks down. I won't trade it if it breaks up. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I consider it more of a filter and maybe it's just